This is another New Black World Order TV Productions. And finally, the queens came through. We got some females that's ready to share their, you know, their knowledge. What's happening? How y'all doing? I'm doing great. All right. What's your name, sister? Melinda. Melinda? Yes. All right. And Queen. Queen Melinda. Okay. Right. And uh, we also have... Lita Lee. Hey, Lita Lee doing? from In The Mix, um, Channel 95 Comcast. Sister had a beautiful show on where she uh, went through a lot of topics that got you in your feelings, that made you cry, made you laugh, made you smile. <laughs> yep. It was awesome. Yep. In the mix. Y'all check her out in future times on Channel 95, Comcast, Richmond, Virginia. Yep. All righty. Um, what are we talking about today, sister? Well, I was writing um, earlier about how the Europeans came with the Bible in one hand and the sword in the other, and I'm a poet, okay. so I write. And I've been writing for, since I was in the third grade, really. And basically, I share this information with anyone. I share our history with the children, adults, anybody who want to listen and want to learn, I share our history because we have a rich, wealthy history. Okay, no doubt. Which it has been distorted on many levels, but if you want this information, they can come to my class and I will be happy to teach them. Okay. From Ashes organization. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm talking about. So, when you um say that they came with the Bible and with the sword, are you implying or suggesting, or are you outright saying that the Bible was forced on us? Yes, it was. Okay. Could you go in on that? I'd be more than happy to go in. Christianity was forced on black people through, and during slavery. Now, some people believe that, no, we practiced Christianity before slavery, but it was forced on our people during slavery. Okay. Yes, okay. it was. They told you who God was and who were we worshiping before they brought that Bible to us. They had the Bible in one hand and the sword in the other. And they, to your face they call you their brother, but behind the back, but with a brother, I wrote down some stuff on a piece of paper, and I want to read this. Now, would a brother give you disease blankets? Would a brother put shackles and chains on you? Would a brother torture or starve you to death? Would a brother oppress you? Would a brother repeatedly rape your wives and your daughters? Would a brother wipe out your entire family and race? Because anybody does that is not a brother. Okay, so are you suggesting, implying or outright saying that they use the term, the affectionate term brother, to disarm you? That's to right. give you some sense or a false sense of security? Yes, they did. They used the term brother. Okay. And um, in one of my poems I wrote a while back, I said you can keep your red, white, and blue and your confederate flags too. That was just one of the lines that I put in a poem that I had written. And, but the poem was called The Nightmare Began. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So what should we do? in a situation such as this. Should we continue to try to uphold this false sense of brotherhood between I these think people? that personally we were better off doing segregation because after we integrated we lost a sense of who we were. We lost a lot of people lost their black pride. We had before that we had our own businesses, theaters, Rosewood, we had her, yes. Tulsa, and Oklahoma. Then, but then at, they they forced us here. That's another line in one of my poems. They forced us here. The largest forced migration in history. They forced us here and then wanted segregation. Okay. Then, you know, but basically, before that period, we had our own, a lot of our own. Now, the majority of our money is going to them, back in their neighborhoods. And they taking the money that we give them and taking care of their families in their neighborhood, in their communities. Okay. How do you, um, or what do you have to say about what's going on in Baltimore? Wow. I mean, hey, they start murdering us, our men, and now they're starting on our babies, putting them down the hot boiling water, and he walked out that courtroom. He didn't even get a date, the gentleman that did that. Now, I said, first they started on our black men, our black youth, now our black babies. Oh, yeah. In Africa, they murdered 500 African babies. They injected them with the AIDS virus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we are tired. People are tired of this. 
And when we take a stand, they call the National Guards, two police from two, two different states, and they get everybody to come and support their cause. But what about when they kill our people? Right. And Who's then and us? then they get uh, 300, 300 Christian clergy people to whom you spoke earlier that they forced that Bible on them. Yes. They get 300 of them to come out and convince the people that the rioting is the worst thing that happened in this ordeal. I'm thinking that the worst thing that happened in this ordeal is that they murdered an innocent black man. And most of all of that they murder are unarmed men or either handcuffed. So how could you be a threat if I'm either handcuffed, face down, or unarmed? When the police officers are known to have at least six weapons on them, they had the mace, the sticks, the guns, the I mean, all those weapons they have on them. How can an unarmed man be a threat when most of the time when they come to you is more than one of them? So how could an unarmed man be a threat when two or three officers or five or even more are on that one person that's unarmed? But I'm going by what Dr. Julia Harris said. She said it's not the weapon in their hand that they're afraid of. It's the weapon in their pants. They want black genocide. Right, because... They're afraid that if we right, continue right, right, to make... Yes, right, genetic annihilation. Genetic annihilation. Right, because if we was just to turn <laughs> and examine what you just said, they literally are afraid of a black planet. That's what they're afraid of. Dia. And once we come back to our conscience and our right mind, our aware and enlightenment, they're afraid of that, that we're going to wake up, our people, our youth, we're going to wake them up, and they're going to realize who they really are. Right. That's what they're afraid of. So if they're not beating them down, they're locking them down, or they're shooting them down. Right. And those people in Maryland took a stand. They're tired. Those people, they're tired of this. Right. Frustrated. That's right. Frustrated about the lack of opportunities. That's right. Um, how uh, certain people are blocked out of the financial districts and they can't access that money in That's order right. to do something constructive with it, such as feed their families. That's right. And so they're left out there. That's um, right. Uh, one, one thing that, um, that really disturbs me, um, whenever there's an, a terrorist attack, the media and the government wants other Muslims to speak out against what Muslims are doing. Right. And whenever there's a riot, they want the black clergy and the black community to come out and speak out against the rioting. Right. But they don't equally tell whites to speak out against what these corrupt police officers police are doing. Corrupt. How do you feel about that? They, the police officers, in, th in that case, they go from apprehending the villains to becoming the villains themselves. When they think that they are above the law or they break the law, mm -hmm. trying to apprehend these people. Now, I know some young men, they said they were walking down the street and here in Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Right. They said they they were just walking down the street. Officers came to them. Um, where are y'all going? What are y'all up to? Where are y'all just coming from? They said, we just left this building. Um, do you have an ID? Um, what's in your pockets? Do you have any weapons on you? Right. And the gentleman said, we were just walking down the street. Right. I mean, what made you stop us? I mean, do you have probable cause to stop us, you know? And so, you know, after they started question the officers questioned them, they questioned them back. They knew their rights, these two gentlemen. They knew their rights. So after they let them know that they know their rights, he backed up off. Right. Okay. Um let's go to talking about uh how America is double standard. Rioting and looting. It's just the reality of what war is. When we examine war, war is beat your ass and rob you. Which Plain they and did simple. To the Africans and all the other, to the Native Americans and everywhere else. Right, they have everywhere they go. On the planet, they rob them. Robbery, murder, chaos, disaster, destruction. Looting. And they are looting and they are known for this. Right. What about, see, because we could, we could talk about what did they loot out of Iraq? And what did they loot out of Africa? What did they loot from um, America? From everywhere that they from had India. stuff put in India and everywhere they the had stuff Hope put in yes. The Hope Diamond was taken out of India. Mm -hmm. It was one of the largest, most beautiful blue diamonds that the world has ever seen. They had to return that. Mm -hmm. You heard? 
But and what the, about the stuff they didn't return that they stole? That they know, still that got. They looted, right. But nobody, the media, the government, and even these dumbass clergy people who are condemning the brothers and sisters rioting and looting. Why wouldn't you rob your enemy so he won't have finances to fight you? <laughs> that makes sense to me. But here's the thing that I don't understand. We've been marching since, uh, not before Martin Luther King Day. We've been marching, we've been singing, we've been praying, and we have been waiting. Since then, and here it is, 2015, and we're still marching. We're still singing, we're still praying, and we're still waiting. When are we going to stand up and do something about this? Yeah, yeah, that's Come what I'm together. talking about. I and then, the, and I feel like the the Europeans and all the other cultures, if you are tired, come and stand with us. Take a stand with us. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Well, I think they. I don't want them standing next to me, but I think they should <laughs> take a stand on being more vocal against these cops. Well, they're the one that um, has the power and control. Just and like authority. you want That's Muslims right. to speak out against terrorism, right? We demand. Right. That your hypocrite ass speak out against what these police are doing. That's right. That's if you saying. want black people to speak to their children about riding in Baltimore, about riding in Ferguson, in the next event that's going to happen, they're going to do that too. And you're going to ask them to go out and speak against that when you white motherfuckers have yet to speak out against what these police are doing. That's right. You have yet to actually go through your neighborhood and cry loud against what people think and believe in your neighborhood that's that right. produced these children that grew up and became cops. That's right. And just like I said on one of the shows that we were on in the mix, they have taken the authority from the parents as far as in the black neighborhood and communities. And when that happened, the children become, we have a dysfunctional family, the school is chaotic, and your community is, is just out of control. So if you take the power and authority from the parents and put it in the children's hand, like um, Dr. Julia Harris said, then what's going to what's going to become of our world and our community and our household and our schools? Okay, okay. So, uh, Sister Lily, how you doing? Fine, how you Would doing? you like to chime in on some of these subjects? Well, basically, I just feel like I just feel like black people need to stick together and stop killing each other. And the white man is killing us, and we're not doing nothing about it. We we'll talk about it, but don't do nothing about it. Right, right. So, what are some of the things that a black woman could do within her own household to change this thing? Because I think that we listen to our mothers. Right. A lot of our fathers were absent, so right. we had to listen to our mothers. Right. What can our mother do? to teach us who the enemy is. Who should we stand with? Who should we fight with? What can a mother do in teaching her child that? Because the mother is the first teacher. Right. And we believe our mothers more than we believe our fathers. Right. I think it should be um, a community thing. You get together with the community, talk about it with the community, and travel around your neighborhood with it. Right. And then get everybody, then bring it downtown, and then have a, a ride. Like uh, uh, a riot or a rally. Yeah, like rally. <laughs> or are we going to rally the riot? <laughs> right. I'm not knocking the brothers riding, but I think we need a more organized way to channel that force. Right? To channel that force. But even the instinctive revolutionary is still needed. But it needs to come to a form of logically revolting. Right. You feel me? We need to go to these people with some directives. We need to go to these people with some commands. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and we need to command ourselves. Well, they say America needs a healing, but how could you heal when you don't think that you're doing something wrong? How could you heal when you are in denial for what you are doing? How could you heal if you think that the person is inferior to you? Okay. Okay. Um. What are some of the things that, like you spoke earlier about this Bible, do you think that Bible gave white people a superiority complex? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I mean, even from Jesus. If you read the description of Jesus in the Bible, his skin looked like it was burnt in the fire, his hair is in locks, and wool locked, and you know, that is not a description of a European person. That's telling you right there that he was a man of color. He was, you know? Right. And what they have done, they have uh, Michelangelo and them have wiped down every 
every image in the Bible. And drew the see. picture of and Caesar, picture. Moses. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. The son of whoever. <laughs> yeah. But um, I greatly appreciate you coming out. This is the first woman to actually come out and speak on New Black World Order TV. How do you like some of the events that you attended that the New Black oh, World Order Oh, I, I enjoyed every lecture that I have gone to. Standing room order, it was packed and every lecture that I have gone to, and then they feed the people at the end. That's right. New Black that's World right. Order actually right. feed, you, and, um, feed you. And they, not only you have been enlightened, and that's what that's the best we want to do. We want to make these children and the people in the community aware of what's going on out here in this world. Okay. All right. And I appreciate you coming out. Would you come back again in a future date and share with us some more of your wisdom? Love it. We'd All right. Love to. We appreciate you. Thank Black you. Power. Black Power. New hey. Black World Order TV Productions. Sister Melinda is in the house. In the house. Oh. And we also enjoy. This is her daughter, Lily. Hey. Again, um, tell them about your show. Literally in the mix on channel 95 Comcast, Verizon 36 at 6 o'clock on Fridays. Um, just talking about different hot topics with Miss Melinda and Shaw himself. Right. And, um, and thank you for inviting me on the show. You're welcome. You can call in and give your opinions and stuff. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you can talk to them about it. And um, nice nice being on your show, Shaw. All right. And thank you. And I appreciate you. All Please right. come again. All right. Thank you. This is another New Black World Order TV Productions, and we out.